Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. I ask it's nice to have a, know that a, a demon doesn't have another place to live. But he's gone somewhere. Those demons go somewhere. And the Bible says that they seek dry ground. You know how people who don't worship become? Dry ground. Oh, hallelujah. They become dry ground. You know, people get spirits and don't even know it. It doesn't manifest right then and there. But they will manifest because they must be fed. Amen? They must be fed. Would you grab your swords tonight, please? <laughs> yes. And go to Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Mm. How many of y'all know we're in the last minutes? <laughs> if you don't, you know now. The word says something very powerful. It says that there will be more and more imposters and more evil. The battle's getting harder, not easier. And God is allowing it so that you press more into him. Does everybody get that? Amen. The closer you are to the Lord, the more protected you are. God is looking for a relationship, not long distance, closeness. He's looking for his sons and daughters. He's looking for those who will become him. And God loves to express himself. <laughs> In Matthew 7 and verse 21, would you read it with me? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, isn't that pretty amazing? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter. That's phenomenal. That blows all that religious theology of once saved, always saved. Then the people will say, well, they were never saved from the beginning. <laughs> oh, really? They make excuses for their theology because it's not the theology of true Christ. There's only one truth. That's it. There's no in-betweens. There's no gray areas. There's one truth. And many are going to say, Lord, Lord, come on, man, what's happening? Let's go home. Take me in. He's going to say, no, you didn't do the will of my father. You did your will. Mm. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. So they use God. You know, God doesn't mind being used to rescue souls, but everyone still must get before him and be accountable. See, there's a lot of people thinking that they're going home because God is using them. Does everybody get that? Well, God uses me in a great way. That's good. Are you right before God? God can use a donkey. Hmm. But Lord, we prophesied. We cast out devils. We did all of these works. In verse 23, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. But wait a minute. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I spoke in tongues. I laid hands on the sick. I even raised the dead a couple times. Come on. I don't know you. Hmm. Why? You practice lawlessness. You what? You practice. 
Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me because you what? Practice lawlessness. In other words, you are out restraints. You thought that you could go and do whatever you want to do according to the way you feel and still make it home. Does everybody get that? See, God's will is established by righteousness, not lawlessness. So, does everybody get this? This is where many people are going to be deceived in the end, end time. The rapture is going to come. The body of Christ will be removed. And let me tell you, there's going to be many left behind. Many. And I wouldn't want to stand before the Lord as one who preached once saved, always saved. Because there is blood on their hands. Does everybody get this? Never think that just because you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're going home if you're fornicating, lying, cheating, stealing, and everything else. That's practicing lawlessness. But we've been together for seven years, me and her, and had kids and everything. Well, didn't get married. No, no, we can't do that. You kidding? I won't get my benefits from the government. And then she won't get her stuff from the government. Then how are we going to make ends meet? <laughs> you don't need to worry about your ends meeting because you're coming to an end. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 24. Therefore, whoever, what? Here's these sayings of mine and what? Does them. Does everybody get it? And does them. I will liken him to be a what? Wise man who built his house on the what? Rock. A rock is a foundation. It's a foundation. You know, you're not going to build on sand, are you? You're going to build on rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house and it did not fail. It did not fall. For it was founded on the rock. We know Jesus is the rock, right? But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the what? Sand. You know how many there so-called believers building their house on the sand? You know how many believers there are that don't even read the word of God? So how can they build their house on a rock? It's impossible. Let me tell you, I have met many individuals that say Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior and do not believe the Bible. They are lost. L-O-S-T, living outside of salvation's truth. Lost. You know what they live by? How they feel. They have an emotional foundation and they become emotional builders. And that's what the devil wants people to become, emotional builders so that they build their foundation on emotion. You know why? Because here's his, this is his Bible. This is what he says. Do what you feel like. That's his scripture. Do what you feel like. Listen, when we were in the world, didn't we do what we feel like? That's how we lived in the world. Well, let me tell you, there are many individuals who accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and still doing what they feel like. That is not God's will. That's the will of the enemy. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it what it fell and what great was its fall great was its fall now look at this so it was when jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teachings for he taught them as one with having what authority not as the scribes see the scribes were the writers they were the ones that also interpret the writing 
but they interpret it with man's understanding, not through the Spirit of God. So that's what the Word says, the letter kills, but the Spirit brings life. So everybody got this? Built on the sayings of eternal words of truth, it builds an eternal foundation. Has everybody got it? If you build on the eternal sayings of truth, these words, you are a builder of an eternal foundation. God establishes and requires us to have a foundation that it's built solid no matter what. Why? So we are immovable. You know why our people are easily moved? Because they're still building on emotion. And think about, look at everything that you see right now. The whole world, everything is built on emotion. Everything. If it feels good, it must be good. That's how the world looks at things. And Matthew 16. The world establishes eternal uh, emotional builders. The kingdom of God establishes eternal builders. It's totally different. Matthew 16. And verse 13. Everybody there? Anybody there? Cool. Don't get emotional on me. <laughs> Hallelujah. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say? 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 In other words, he's not looking at what other people say. He wants to know what you got to say. You know, there was a period of time because I, 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 I one of my favorite books is Ezekiel. Because after my visitation from the Lord, I was Zeked. Man, I was reading the book of Ezekiel. I wanted to know more. I wanted to go. I wanted to go where he took me, and I want to go back. And I used to read the book of Ezekiel. Oh, man, I'd read it from cover to cover. And, 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 and one of the things that hit me so strong in the area of who do you say that I am? See, the great I am, the awesome almighty one that holds everything. And I wanted to just constantly go into that presence, into that glory. And in that visitation, it reminded me, of course, not only of well, Saul who became Paul, but also in Simon bar -Jonah because there's something that occurred with him. See, God spoke to him. Everybody's going to, you know, the, you, everybody, we're impressed by the world all the time. We're being hard-pressed everywhere. We're being hard-pressed by TV, by music, by commercials, by advertisements, by billboards, by books, by education, by the medical field, by everything. Everything is always impressive. It's always trying to promote. Man, every time you turn the station or something, trying to make you feel better. They got little butterflies and they got all of these goofy things. And you know, I mean, look at how many people that are on antidepressants. Why? Because they're trying to feel better. Listen, where you came from is the most awesome feeling you could ever have. The problem is you can't have it like that till you get home. You can get glimpses of it. You can get some presence of it. You can, unless the Lord comes and takes you. <laughs> Yeah. You know? Snap. <laughs> now that can happen. Amen? But we get glimpses of that glory of that presence. 
Let me tell you, after my visitation, I realized what spirit-filled meant. I ain't been spirit-filled since. I stay filled as much as I can with the Spirit. But when you are filled with the Spirit like that, you're not here. Everything you lean on, you think is going, you're going to just fall through. Everything that I looked at and touched, I knew was temporary. Thinking, why am I here? I'm living in a temporary place. I'm eternal. And everything I looked at, I said, man, you're temporary. This is temporary. This, everything was different. And I thought that was the experience everybody had when they accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. <laughs> Whoa. Come to find out it wasn't. Hallelujah. I sure wish everyone had that experience. We wouldn't need Bible studies. <laughs> we wouldn't need training sessions. We'd all be led by the Holy Spirit, hear his voice, and go, yes, we'd be like-minded, like-willed, like-hearted, and we'd kick butt on the devil, and we'd rule the earth. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, but who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the Christ. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So in other words, he heard from God, didn't he? Nobody told him. He said, man, you're the Christ. In other words, that means you are the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty who come here, all wrapped up in a body, sealed with the name of Jesus. He is the eternal presence, power, and truth. He is known as the rock, the foundation that everything would be built on in the Holy Spirit. He says, and I also say to you that you are Peter, now, he didn't call him a pope. Do you understand this? He said, you're Peter, not the pope. Sheesh kebab. And on this rock, on the foundation, I'm going to build my church on the revelation of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty is where the foundation is going to be built. And without the Holy Spirit, there's not a true foundation. Won't last. Now listen to this. And on this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Why? Because the gates of hell cannot defeat the Holy Spirit. Then he says something even more. He says, and now I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. There's two keys I'm going to give you. And whatever you bind on earth, whatever you speak in, the, in this realm, whatever you bind on earth in the physical realm, when you speak it, you will access the spirit realm and it will also bind demonic forces and principalities and whatever you ask on that side. And whatever you loose in the physical realm will also be loosed in the spirit realm. Does everybody got that? Hmm. Then, of course, he commanded his disciples that they should not tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ, the anointed one in his anointing. Again, build on a solid rock foundation of the eternal presence, power, and truth in the Holy Spirit. Not on a man, not on an emotion. Amen? Not in an experience, but in the Holy Spirit. To establish the kingdom of God on earth in the physical realm. Does everybody get this? 
in Romans 14. Romans 14. In verse 16. Let's speak it together. Therefore, do not let your what? Your good be spoken as evil, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. Hello? It's not going to church and eating donuts and having coffee. That's after church. Don't bring your coffee and donuts into the sanctuary. Why? That ain't, that ain't worship God. It's all stinking religion. It's garbage. Trying to keep people in a church by feeding them coffee and donuts and fat food. They'll keep you in the church. How about truth? How about freedom in the spirit? Not freedom to sin. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but what? Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. There's your emotional. Has everybody got it? There's the three emotions in the kingdom of God. Would you rather be tormented or have peace? Would you be, rather be miserable or have joy? Would you rather be a sinner or practice righteousness? Hello. That is the kingdom of God. Has everybody got that? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's the rock of foundation. Where? In the Holy Spirit, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. That's your foundation. That's what the Holy Spirit, why he's saying do not build your foundation on emotion. It won't last won't last. That's why people get easily offended. Hello? People don't even know why they're offended. Why ain't going to that church anymore? I don't know. <laughs> There's got to be a reason why. It's because you got a demon. You're trying to emotionally build your foundation. Unstable. Hallelujah. Psalm 97. Emotional builders. They build an emotional foundation and it doesn't last. It's like building on sand. That's why you got a bunch of church hoppers. They're hopping from one place to another. They don't know what they're doing. You know what they're building? A sandcastle. <laughs> People need to get solid and set. What's God told you to do? Amen? Now, don't get me wrong. I, 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 was, I was established in a, in a fellowship, but I'd gone and visit other churches. There's times when the Holy Spirit say, I, I'd say, man, I want, I, you know, I'm, I, need to, I was needing healing. I needed to worship. And he told me, go here. Okay, cool. And I go there for a night, but I was still in a solid foundational church. I served there. I was plugged in there. I didn't go anywhere else unless the Lord sent me to go do something. And it wasn't by a feeling. I don't go to church because I feel like it. Hello? Hello? I don't fellowship because I feel like it. I fellowship because I love him. I want to be obedient because I love him. I'm in love with the creator. And I want to do everything I can to please him. But there's something important that you and I must have. We must know what he says. We must know his unction. We must know his leading. 
we must know when to wait and when to move. And that's the problem. People are always moving by how they feel. Anybody ever moved by fear? If you didn't raise your hand, you're a liar. We all have. I moved out in front of that car real quick because of fear. Fear moves people in the wrong direction. Hello? Hello? Do you ever see a squirrel come out on the street? <laughs> Doesn't even know what to go. You got to stop because you don't want to run it over. It's freaked out. Looks like it just had six cups of coffee. <laughs> what was that squirrel's name? That Hammy. Hammy. Do you ever see that movie? What's that called? Over the Hedge. Hammy. I love that one. Hammy's my favorite character in there. Are you kidding me? I'm hammed out, man. I'm in. He snapped, that squirrel, he snapped. <laughs> Psalm 97. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 1. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Would you read this with me? The Lord what? Rains. Rains. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be what? Glad. Look at this. Clouds and darkness surround him. Now look at it. Are you ready? What's the next? Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Does everybody see that? Now, didn't the Lord say, the one of those people said, Lord, Lord, let us in. He said, I don't know you. He said, you practice lawlessness. Why? Because see, the foundation is built by righteousness and justice. That is the fruit of the foundation. Righteousness and justice. A f look at a fire goes before him and burns up his enemies around about. His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness. And all the people see his glory. But let... All be put to shame who serve carved images. How many of you know you can be your carved image? Amen. Amen. Who boasts of idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad. And the daughters of Judah rejoice because your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high above all the earth. You are exalted far above all the gods. You who love the Lord do what? They what? They hate evil. See, if you don't hate evil, you don't love the Lord. There's too many believers saying they're petting evil. You know why? Because they're building emotionally. Somebody got that? They're building emotionally. They become emotional builders instead of truth builders. It says he preserves the souls of his saints and delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. Yeah, all foundations of righteousness and justice. It, it, again, it goes back to the arena of the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, which is the kingdom of God on earth in his people that have his foundation in the Holy Spirit. Mark 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 4. So we got to ask ourselves, I'm, are we emotional builders or eternal builders? Mark 4, verse 13. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? Well, how then will you understand all the parables? He gave him a simple one. He said, the sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they what? Hear, Satan comes what? 
immediately. Believe me, he doesn't come up two minutes later. Does everybody get this? He comes immediately to what? Steal. What's he trying to steal? He's trying to steal eternal word, words that build foundation. He wants to continue tr to try and trick us so we build on emotional and not on truth. He said, then the devil comes, and Satan comes and steals immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Verse 16, these likewise are the ones sown on the stony ground who when they hear the word immediately receive it with what? Gladness. Yeah, man, thank you, Jesus. And when they have no root in themselves, so they endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution or trials arises for the word's sake, immediately they what? Stumble. Again, they're Still mixing truth with emotion. So everybody got that? You can't mix truth and emotion. It's like mixing sand with stone or no mortar. It won't sell. It's not going to, it's going to, shh. Okay, verse 16. Uh, I mean, verse 18, right? Now, these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares. Now, let me share with you. The cares of this world are the emotions, the desires of this world. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things Entering in, choke the word, and it becomes what? Unfruitful. That means that person is unstable. People that are emotion, emotional builders with an emotional foundation are unstable. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. Some 30-fold, 60-fold, and some 100-fold. Again, Satan comes immediately in their thoughts to disqualify the truth with emotional lies of carnal experiences and, and remembrances related to feelings that they've experienced in the carnal setting. Does everybody understand that? That's what's called the cares of this world, the cares. In this world, all things are emotionally built in this realm everything is emotionally built relationships everything everything that a person is doing is looking for an emotional feedback to feel better the ruler of this world is satan again his doctrine is do as you feel so follow the trends of the world controlled by satan's kingdom He's promoting everything that he can to cause you to build on how you feel. As a little, as a child, a baby, the only thing it can think of is itself, right? It's a little flesh creature. Emotionally. Mine, mine, mine. It just wants everything to fulfill its own desire. Has everybody got that? As we begin to mature and and, and become adults and so forth, we begin to look out for other people's interest. But people begin in the carnal world look out for other people's interests as long as there's a reward for them. Does everybody get it? That's how the world operates. That's why Jesus said, when you give, don't ask for it back. Hallelujah. I had a friend one time. He, he stayed at the house and whatever. And he left with my blanket. I said, Lord, it's my blanket. Why do you want to take my blanket? It was my blankie. <laughs> 
He said, don't ask for a bag. I said, I won't. <laughs> so I blessed him with my blankie. <laughs> Jesus had compassion. <laughs> One time I was at a store, and I walked into this gas station. I mean, I drove into this gas station, and uh, I, I, I needed to use the phone there. At that time, I didn't have my cell phone. And I walked into, you know, the, like those little sick holes or whatever they are, I don't know, little mark things. So I'm going to go open the door, and I see this feet. And laying in the corner, I'm like, there's a pair of feet there. And it was under like this big uh, coat. And people are walking by. I'm like, people are walking by. It's cold out. It's wintertime. I mean, it was one of those cold days. It must have been 35 degrees out. It was very, very cold. And uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't just walk by. So I... Bent down and I lifted the coat. I want to make sure nobody didn't shoot me or something. And there's this woman underneath there, and she was huddled into the corner of the wall. And uh, I said, "What are, What are you doing?" She said, "I'm I'm I'm staying warm." And I and I said, "Sit, sit up, sit, talk to me." And she she sat up and she was crippled. And, 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 I, and I said, what are you doing? Do you live near? Yes, I live in a porch at my sister's house. You know. I said, well, what can I do for you? And she looked at me. She looked at her feet. She had no shoes. And she looked at mine. I thought, snap, it's cold out here. <laughs> I'm on my way to a business meeting. And I can see the Lord going. <laughs> smiling down on me. So I said, all right. And uh, so I took her foot. I put it on the bottom of my sneaker, as I sat on the curb with her. And they fit. So I took off my sneakers and I heard the Lord impress. She needs socks too. <laughs> I said, okay. So I took my socks off and she couldn't put them on herself because she was crippled. So I put my socks in sneakers and uh, my feet were getting very cold but she'd been out there for a while I don't know how you know. I said do you, do you, what, what else do you need and she looked at me and I'm thinking okay she doesn't need to say a word go ahead tell me what does she need he said give her ten dollars I gave her ten dollars he said pray with her and I prayed with her I said you know Jesus she said yes I know Jesus praise God and uh, so we prayed, and, and, I, and I, this is like, you know, I, I wanted to bring her home. And, uh, but that's not what I was led to do. In other words, what I want to do when I was led to do is two different things. And her sister lived right down the street or whatever, and, and she was staying there, so... I got in the van and I started driving. I'm thinking, man, I can't go to a business meeting with no shoes or socks. These guys are going to think I'm nuts. So anyways, I canceled and went home and the Lord made a way for other things. But let me share with you, God will challenge you. He wants to know whether you're building your foundation on emotion or truth. Again, Jesus had compassion Compassion is righteous pity. Does everybody understand that? 
It's righteous pity. That's what compassion is. Wow, you pity the person, but it's righteous pity. It's no condemnation, no nothing. You pity them. You're, you're concerned for them. Does everybody understand that? Again, one of the things that in that area of building on truth instead of emotion, it means you must deny yourself. Jesus gave us the formula. Deny yourself. That's, not a, that's just not one you feel like denying yourself. That's a life. It's every day. It's every decision. You don't put yourself first. You put kingdom first. You know, you heard, we, Sunday we heard the testimony about the individual that couldn't quit smoking, so somebody said, write on the card and put it with your cigarettes. Can you see Jesus smoke? Do you see Jesus smoking? Do you see Jesus doing this? <laughs> Jesus says something very powerful. He said, I don't do anything unless I see my father do it first. You know, I was always watching those wristbands, which I don't see anymore. What would Jesus do? I, don't, I think people couldn't do it any longer. They finally threw him out. <laughs> So I haven't seen a manufacturer. I haven't seen people wearing them anymore. What would Jesus do, man? <laughs> Forget this, man. I can't do this anymore. But that is the question. That, in other words, if we don't see Jesus doing it, then we shouldn't. Amen? Is everybody okay? One of the things that happens is emotional building begins when a person loses their identity in Christ. They lose who they are, and they begin to build emotionally. Some believers never grab hold of the identity of who they really are, and they build emotionally. They never know who they really are. Let me tell you, Satan's kingdom doesn't want you to know who you are because when they know who you are, they fear you. Losing your identity in Christ is a dangerous thing. That's how people who started right begin to build emotionally again because they lose their identity. Amen? Listen. Your identity and my identity in Christ is not built by failure nor success. It's not built by sickness it's not built by poverty. It's not built by lack. It's not built by abundance. Our identity, our identity is built in Christ himself in which we stand on his righteousness and through his foundation that he builds in his spirit in us. It isn't built on anything else. When you begin to build your identity on things that you do, you'll begin to lose it on things you didn't do. Is everybody all right? So we build our identity in Christ of what he's done and who we are in him and who he is in us. That's it. The finished price, the identity is set and established. So many individuals, and that's what Jesus was saying to them, you're building your identity on works and not on me. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Oh, hallelujah. Now, the world builds their identity on successes and failures. You understand that? Because it's emotional. That's why you have, uh, goodness, 50% of the American population on medication. Everybody's taking one of those little butterfly things. Oppression. 
what's it, uh, antidepressants and, uh, there, there's, I mean, you got schizophrenia, you got bipolar and all kinds of things that are out there. And it's all associated with emotional breakdowns. Remember, demons get fed by emotion. They want to promote that emotional stuff, man. They want you to be miserable. They want you to be oppressed. They don't want you to be righteous, peace, and joy. Because they can't get fed on them. They get fed on everything else. Fear, anger, and hatred. Look, we got a whole Middle East that's full of hatred. And they're invading this country with hatred. Then they're promoting racism and everything else. So man comes against man. And it's just the demons that are getting fed. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, everybody there? Verse 19. Would you speak it with me? Hallelujah. Again, do you think that we excuse ourselves to you? We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things, beloved, for your edification. For I fear lest when I come I shall not find you such as I wish, so that you should be found by you such as you do not wish, lest there be contentions and jealousies and outbursts of wrath. Selfish ambitions, backbitings and whisperings and conceits and tumblings. Are those emotions? Yes. yes. Lest when I come again, my God will humble me among you. And I shall mourn for many who have sinned before and have not repented of the uncleanness, fornication, and lewdness which they have practiced. Emotions, builders of emotional foundation that cannot stand in the kingdom of God. In Galatians chapter 5. The works of the flesh are emotion. Think about it. The word says, those who live according to the flesh will what? Die. See, so the devil, the powers of darkness, want you to live according to how you feel. They want your foundation to be built by emotion. They want us to become emotional builders instead of eternal builders. In verse 19, now the works of the flesh are what? They're evident, which are what? Adultery. People that commit adultery, you think that's emotional? Yeah. They're doing it for what? A feeling. Fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is associated with drugs and alcohol. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions and dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, and revelries and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things, those who build their foundation on emotion, will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is worldly emotion. Has everybody got it? Works of the flesh are emotional. Emotional foundation built by the carnal emotion. Which, that's what the world is. When you and I are out in the world, we become emotional builders. Look at all the businesses that are out in the world. Man, you go to business, they're emotional builders. All these sales reps, what do they do? They bring them in and when they do, they emotionally build them up, don't they? What do they encourage them with? Money. It's emotional building. Somebody get this. Money. The love of money is the root of what? All evil. So the powers of darkness try to get people to love money. Somebody get it? They live to make money. They live, they serve money. Money should serve us. Hallelujah. Emotional builders. Luke 14. Promote emotional foundations. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. In verse 25, it says, Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, in his own life also he cannot be my disciple. And, and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he is, has enough to finish it? Lest after he has laid the what? Foundation. And is not able to finish, all who see it begin to what? Mock him. Saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he's able to with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has an ears to hear, let him hear. He says, forsake all emotional building. Basically, that's the bottom line. Forsake all emotional building. Does everybody got it? Emotional foundations are associated with anxiousness. Anybody ever been anxious? Don't raise your hands. You make an anxious decision, you realize later, man, why did I do that for? Anxious decisions are made by emotional desires. Now listen, there's something that happens. When a person makes an anxious decision, it will prevent a change in the decision, causing a person to take what is good and fair and not wait for best. I'm going to share this again. In other words, let me give you an example. Person is looking for a vehicle. Goes out to buy a car. Finds a car. Likes it. Everything's cool. The salesman says, listen, here it is. You need to buy this now. But the, in, in reality, that person likes the car but still wants to look at other places. But he feels pushed. Hello? Pushed. Because there was an emotional buildup. There was an area of anxiousness or fear being used to manipulate, to purchase. So the person says, okay, I'll put a deposit on it. And the guy says, well, look, at if you put a deposit on it, you don't get it back. Well, I'm afraid I'll lose this. Well, then put the deposit on it, and we'll hold it for you. But we're only going to hold it for you for 24 hours. Now, the person is convinced now because they put the money on it. They don't want to lose the money, so they're bound to it. Does everybody understand this? Now, the deal may be a good or fair deal, but it may not be the best deal. Now, that person can't. See, what happens when a decision is made on anxiousness, it's very difficult to change the decision after it's been made. Do you understand? You know how many people marry the wrong person by anxiousness? And then because the commitment's already been done, they don't want to break it because of fear. Well, then they, the devil convinced them, well, you're not going to get any better. Same thing with the vehicle. You're not going to get any better. And the person goes into that covenant and realizes later that they got the good and the fair and missed the best. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. I want to go to um, 1 Kings chapter 18. Oh, Hallelujah. 
Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? We need to stop the emotional building and not become emotional builders. We need to be truth builders. Listen, right now, there's a lot of emotional building going on, man. There's, there's, it's, it's hitting everyone. Emotion from all over. Fear. Everything's promoted. Everything you turn on is fear. The end's coming. Praise God. I can go home. Amen. Hallelujah. First Kings 18. Let's grow there. Hallelujah. First Kings 18. In verse 22. First Kings 18 and verse 22. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's, Baal, is nothing but a demon. Baal's prophets are 450 men. So Elijah's like, man, I'm the only one left. And Baal's got 450 prophets. Therefore, let them give us two bulls. Let them choose one bull for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood as a sacrifice, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood and put no fire under it. So he says, okay, let's get two altars. Let's see whose real God there is. He said, then you call on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of my God. And the God who answers by fire He is God. So all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Everybody agreed. Now Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one of the bull, choose one bull for yourself and prepare it first for you are many and call on the name of your God, but put no fire under it. So they took the bull which was given to them and they prepared it and called on the name of Baal from morning, evening till noon. From morning even till noon, saying, Oh, Baal, heroes. But there was no voice, no answer. Then they leaped about the altar which they had made. Oh, they were getting emotional now. And so it was at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud. Maybe you need to cry louder. Maybe you need to do back flips. For he is God. Either he is God meditating, or maybe he's busy. Or maybe he's on a journey. Or perhaps he's sleeping because he's your God. And must be awakened. Come on, you need to awake him. Scream out, shout, jump for joy, do whatever you got to do. Awake him. So they cried aloud, and they cut themselves. They began to cut themselves. Because they knew that by cutting and dropping human blood, it draw demonic activity. They were hoping that this would be a sacrifice of themselves. And was their custom, because it was their customs. So they cut themselves, they cried aloud, they cut themselves, and they cut themselves with knives and lances until blood gushed out of them. But there was still no answer. And when midnight had passed, they prophesied until t the time of the offering or the evening sacrifice. But there was still no voice, no one answered, and no one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. So all the people came near to him, and he prepared the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. See, Elijah was building the altar on the eternal word. Baal was building the altar on emotion. So he took it, and uh, in, in, uh, in verse 32, Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two sheaves of seed. 
And he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood, and said, Fill four water pots with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Then he said, Do it a second time. And then he did it a second time. And then he said, Do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar, and he also filled the trench with water. And it, and it came to pass at the time of the evening, at the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known to this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done these things at your word. In other words, he built the altar and everything he did according to the eternal word, not by emotion. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. Let this people, that these people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trenches. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. <laughs> So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kintron and executed every one of them. I want you to understand that the devil wants you to become a builder of emotion and not truth. When people begin to build emotion by emotion, when they become emotional builders, they're actually building an altar of Baal. And they don't even know it. You got to remember that Satan's greatest weapon is deception. He doesn't want you to know what he's getting you to do. And his power is fear. He wants those demons must be fed by emotion. And until that understanding comes, people are going to constantly go in the cycle of deception. And they will stay unstable. And they'll be building an altar of God and an altar of Baal. But you can't serve two masters. A house divided will not stand. Amen? Is everybody okay? I need to close somewhere. I got all kinds of stuff here. So let's close somewhere. <laughs> let's close at uh, 2 Corinthians 10. Woohoo! Are you learning something? Second Corinthians 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And verse 7. Do you look at things according to the outward appearance? If anyone is convinced in himself that he is Christ, let him again consider this in himself, that just as he is Christ, even so we are Christ. For even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us, for edification and not for your destruction, I shall not be ashamed, lest I seem to terrify you by letters. For his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak, and his speech contemptible. Let such a person consider this, that what we are in word by letters when we are absent such we will also be indeed when we are present. For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves, comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. In other words, accomplishments, failures, things according to the world. We, however, will not boast beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us, a sphere which, is, which especially includes you. 
If we are not overextending ourselves as though our authority did not extend to you, for it was to you that we came with the gospel of Christ, not boasting of the things beyond measure that is in other men's labors, but having hope that as your faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's sphere of accomplishment. But he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. For he who glories, what? Let him glory in the Lord. Remember, you are in him. You are hidden in him. Don't let the enemy steal your identity. When you give up your identity, when you compromise your identity, you begin to build emotionally. Amen? We need not be emotional builders with an emotional foundation. We need to be eternal builders with an eternal foundation that is immovable in these last days. That's why you're going to find many people will fall from the faith, and it's happening now. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed be protected by the blood of the Lamb, and let it grow and bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. Amen.